Hello guys, this is Silvershade and today I'm going to be showing you how to wait for multiple events in discord.py. So I'm just going to show you how our result is going to look like. So and then my bot sends this message and if I react it says thumbs up added by Silvershade. If I remove it, it says thumbs up removed by Silvershade. If I add it again, it says add it again. And if I send a message, hello world, it says hello world sent by Silvershade. Also, it says timed out when you reach the timeout limit. Okay, so that's enough showcase. Now let's go to the code. Okay. So first of all, I have this simple code, which in which I'm importing async IO discord, the commands extension, and my token. Okay, so I'm running it here. I've initialized a bot with intents equals this. So these are all the intents you need for reaction add and remove, right? And messages comes in that too. So you don't need to do anything separate for the message event. Okay, so coming to my command, it's called wait. And then first of all, there is a string called message. And then it sends a message with the content equals the string message. Right, and then it stores the message in the variable called response. And then after that's done, we are adding a reaction to the message which we just sent which is called response okay so once that's done i'm using the try accept statement for waiting for a reaction add okay so you might know this it's in the documentation pretty simple you just try this and if it reaches the timeout, it raises the timeout error and you can do anything. And if it doesn't reach the timeout and returns, well, you have this statement which says reaction added by user. So right now it's just waiting for one event. So I think you know this already. You can also use this in an else statement, but I don't use it. It's the same, I guess. Okay, so let me just run this. And I will show you. Okay, so T wait. It says waiting for multiple events, not yet. So if I press this, Okay, so I just realized that I haven't edited the message here. So I'm just going to do await response dot edit. And then content equals message and rerun it. It should work now. So So it got its reaction. Okay, I haven't put the loop yet. So let me just put this in a while true loop.
so on timeout it's gonna return so no worries Okay, so if I add a reaction, it says added. And then if I remove nothing, if I add it again, it says added, and that's it. So for some commands, you just want to do like it does something when you react and remove. So both the times something happens. So to do that, you can wait for multiple events. I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so the code is going to be significantly different from this, which we have right now. So I'm just going to comment this. Okay, and then I'm going to make a list called tasks. So tasks equals list of, I'm going to copy this. and paste it and then i'm gonna make another one almost the same but the event is gonna be reaction remove okay so after we have this list we're gonna use a function from async io which is called async io dot wait so it's a coroutine so we're gonna await it async io dot wait and then what this takes in is an iterable of all the tasks which have to be done so i'm gonna pass in the list we just made tasks and then there is another parameter which is called return when we're gonna use that too so return when equals we're gonna use an enum called async io dot first completed i think that's a string so not sure if it's called an enum anyways so once we have this what this is going to return is a tuple of two sets so the first set contains the task which was done and the second set contains the tasks which were not done so i'm just gonna assign it to the variables done and pending okay so these are gonna be sets which have i think task objects for the task which has been done it's gonna be only one i'm just gonna convert it into a list list of done i'm, I'm converting it to a list because we cannot subscript or index a set okay so list of done of index zero is gonna be our result so i'm just gonna call it finished and for the pending tasks we're gonna loop over them for task and pending and then we have to cancel those tasks so to cancel them you have to use the try accept statement so try you say task dot cancel and then you accept an error called async io dot 
cancelled error and then you just pass okay so now all our pending tasks are cancelled and we have our finished task let's just print finished and see what we get okay so let me rerun this and then i'm gonna say t wait okay and then i'm gonna react let's see okay so we've got this task object all right and we've got a warning here a deprecation warning which means that it's gonna be removed soon and what is deprecated the explicit passing of coroutine objects so these are coroutine objects and they can't be explicitly passed so what we have to do is use the asyncio.create task and then pass them so you can just wrap these around with parentheses and asyncio create task okay it's not a coroutine so you can just do it normally like a normal function and okay so this takes a parameter called name which we are gonna use so i'm just gonna assign this the name r add okay and wrap this to with oh shit with parenthesis and asyncio dot create task and then name is gonna be r rem stands for which stands for r reaction remove okay so we have two task objects now instead of coroutine objects and they have different names okay so now once that's done we can rerun this and use the command okay so the first one is the bot adding the reaction i haven't added any checks so that it doesn't become too complicated okay and the second one was mine and then if i remove this you can see that we have three of them and if i add it again okay i did it twice so you can see that we are getting tasks for both reaction add and reaction remove Okay, so finished is our task object. Well, let me just show you the things you can do with a task object. So first of all, we can get its result. So something like finish dot. Okay, let me just hint the type so that it shows us the suggestions, right? Async io dot task okay so if we do finish dot result we're gonna get what this returned so what our bot dot wait for returned we're gonna get that using the result method and we also have a get name method which is gonna return the name we passed in here okay so i'm gonna assign the name finish.getName which is gonna return either this or this to a variable called action and the result we're gonna access it later okay so first we're gonna use some basic if statements and find out if the action was a reaction remove or a reaction add so if action equals equals r add right it's
Okay, so the reaction has been added. Since we are waiting for a reaction add, if this completes, we're gonna get a task with name RADD. Okay, so what, what I'm gonna do here is, well, since I know that it's this, I'm gonna say reaction, comma user equals let me just stop this program and continue so reaction comma user equals finished dot result okay um you know what we're just gonna assign this to a variable beforehand so i'm just gonna say result equals finish dot result okay and then reaction equals reaction comma user equals result since it's a tuple we're gonna unpack it and then after this i'm gonna say message right message plus equals an f string of reaction added by and then user so when you pass in variables into f strings it converts them into str so it uses the str function on these things you pass in here unless you specify and then once we append to the message i'm just gonna edit the response so we have the code here i'm just gonna copy and paste also we had to put a new line here so that it doesn't become messy i'm just gonna do that slash n okay so just gonna copy all of this and paste it below this and i'm gonna change the if to elif and elif action equals r rem right if it is reaction remove the task is gonna have the name r rem and reaction has been removed okay and then i'm gonna change the string to reaction by user removed okay so i'm gonna rerun this and use the command again so when i press this it says reaction added then when i remove it says removed so right now we can see that it waits for either of add or remove so i can do both of them so this can be useful when you're making like a game and you don't want your bot to remove the reaction and wait for the user to add a reaction again so instead of that you can wait for either reaction add or remove and do the same action okay so once we do this i'm just gonna show you what happens if we wait for 60 seconds and we get the timeout error okay so we've got the timeout error and it traces back to line 44 so this is the line which is causing the timeout error okay so i'm just gonna add a try accept statement there try accept async io dot timeout error and then what i'm gonna do here is this which we did earlier control c Control V, I'm gonna uncomment this and indent it. Okay, so if this raises a timeout error, right, it's gonna 
edit the message to timed out and it's gonna return. So we're not gonna have these errors anymore. It's just gonna return. And we don't need this anymore. So I'm just gonna delete this. So that was it. I'm just gonna show you how to make another, you know, how to wait for another event simultaneously, which is gonna be the message event, which I showed you in the finished command earlier. So I'm just gonna make another element in this list which is also going to be the same format. So it's going to be a task object of bot.wait4. And what we are going to wait for is a message. And the name of this task is going to be MES. And the check is gonna be nothing i'm just gonna remove the check and that's it we're gonna go down and action is get name so it returns mes lf action equals equals mes right so a message has been sent so our message i'm gonna call it msg equals result so message only returns one message object unlike a you know reaction which returns a tuple of two objects so we have this message object i'm just gonna hint it to discord.message okay so once we have that i'm gonna copy this again then we're gonna say msg dot content right and then i'm just gonna make it bold sent by msg dot author so i'm gonna run this and if i say t wait and then I can add a reaction. It says reaction added. I can remove it. It says removed. And I can send a message. Hello world. And it says, okay. Um, okay, so I made a mistake here. It should only be two S's. I'm gonna rerun this and use the command again. Then I'm gonna say hello world. And it says hello world sent. Okay, it's sent. Okay, anyways, it's not that big a deal okay so that's how you can you know wait for multiple events so let me give you a quick recap of what we did we have a list okay you can use any iterable you know like a tuple a set and inside that we have task objects right so First, we just 
had these coroutines bot dot wait for and it works but it's deprecated so it's safe to use this create a task out of it and also if you use only this you have no way to know if it's a reaction add or a reaction remove if you use you know like bot dot wait for a message or a reaction add you can figure out by using as instance of message or tuple but if you have two of these right reaction remove and reaction add it's gonna return the tuple of same object so you have no way to figure it out so that's why you make a task give it a good name and use if statements to differentiate okay and when you get the result make sure to put it in a try accept statement okay because this is what is going to raise the timeout error for all of these okay and yeah so we used this function called asyncio.wait then we pass in an iterable which we just made an iterable of tasks and then we've specified that it should return when the first task out of these three completes and it's gonna return a tuple of two sets the first set is gonna have the task which was done and the second set is gonna have the tasks which were pending okay and for task in the set pending we go through every task and we cancel the task in this manner so try task.cancel and then accept asyncio.cancel there right and then for the set done we know that we're gonna have only one element so i just convert it to a list and get the first element because we can't do that in a set and that's the task finished okay and the task has a few methods called get name which we are using to differentiate between different events and the result which is gonna give us the returned objects of that coroutine okay so that was it it's a pretty long video sorry for that and i hope you learned something today and bye bye